Hey everyone, Brian Beeler here with Kevin O'Brien at the Storage View Lab, and today we're looking at the WD Black SN850. Now this little devil was part of the gaming refresh WD put together a couple weeks ago. We already saw the Edge card, right? The uh, with the two drives on it. Yeah, they uh, they want Gen 4 level performance, but using a uh, Gen 3 x 8 uh, card. So it gave more of legacy systems some leg up on performance, but obviously they have a more premier product for those on Gen 4. Yeah, but the card had blinky lights. True, although that does not make your games go faster. Nope. Baloney. Blue lights, we all know, are better for FPS. Anyway, uh, this is the premium product, as Kevin says, PCIe Gen 4, so the latest boards for, and CPUs from AMD will support this, and of course, one day, sometime soon, we hope Intel will as well. And when you pop this guy out, it's pretty neat. Uh, Kevin, there used to be a sticker on this, didn't there? Yeah, we tore the sticker off. We? I did. Kevin has a uh, I can go get a it pure off hate the wall, for the but, for stickers. Uh, yeah. Uh, the point being, this is the two terabyte capacity. You've got the NAND and the controller and some DRAM on one side, and the other side is uh, is flat. And this is um, interesting and important because the ultrabooks, the small form factor, some of the tablety kind of devices out there, the two in ones. Uh, really want this single-sided design to keep their thin profile. Yeah, most of the platforms these days, or most of the newer SSDs, have gone to uh, single-sided. Just gives more compatibility across the board. Right. Well, because it, it'll be universal at that point, right? Yeah. And uh, this will actually enable some blinky lights, not on the device in my hand, but we'll get into it a little bit. They've got a uh, an optional heatsink coming out, which is largely unnecessary, but does have a light. It still will not make your games faster, although if you're into a lot of video editing and start stressing the drive, there are benefits of cooling, but that's not... In in extreme use cases. Yeah, but it's not like just that specific heatsink will make it faster. Any heatsink will Correct. make it faster. Or airflow, stuff like that. What if you put peanut butter on it? Maybe. Ooh, it would be smelling delicious in your gaming rig. Let's take a look at, uh, at the deck here. We've got set up and a quick tour of the specs like i said it's uh, well i didn't say but it is an m.2 form factor uh comes in 500 gig terabyte and two terabyte capacities it's a uh, real short at uh, 2.38 millimeters uh, hefty 7.5 grams what stands out to you kevin in terms of uh, spec sheet numbers it is an 80 millimeter drive but we probably don't care as much about that. Yeah, well, 20, um, 2280, right? Well, overall, I mean, the part uh, that should stand out to everyone is this, it's a Gen 4 drive by four lanes, so it will offer the highest level of performance you're going to be able to find on a M.2 right now. Okay. And five-year warranty, which is kind of standard for this class of, uh, of category. Uh, they've even got a, a some power spec in there, which is... Uh, which is useful to, to I do check like out. the non-operating vibration spec though because I really want to see what the duration of that is and if I'd be able to also survive if I was holding it at those uh, vibration You ranges. would have to hold it but also be holding three axes so I don't yes. know if hatchets would work or if you need full size A axes. shaking vibrating chair perhaps? Perhaps. All right, carry on. Uh, performance wise that's what we're here for though and we're going to see sequential reads across the board at this sort of theoretical max of 7,000 megabytes per second pretty much any premium gen 4 ssd is going to roll that top line number out um, writes will edge up across capacities to the one terabyte but then actually dips a little bit in the two a bunch of iops the rest of the way yeah i mean it's these are hero numbers that everyone wants to show of, hey, we're saturating the interface and this is why Gen 4 is important. Okay. And as mentioned, there's the, uh, the heat sink in that front forward picture that'll be able to uh, uh, strap on there and, and get you at least one light, which uh, 15 to 20 FPS, I think, is what that's good for. Maybe, but is it blue light uh, safe? Because that's the important thing now. Oh, are you wearing those uh, yellow tinted glasses at night? No, I really don't like those. No, but it's supposed to be good for you. And in the behind, you can see what it would have looked like if Kevin had not peeled the sticker off. Yes. All right, carry on. So overall, uh, from a performance perspective, uh, the drive did fairly well in our static benchmarks. On the uh, application side, it slightly trailed the pack. This came in behind uh, the Sabrent and uh, Samsung Gen 4 offerings. 
not by much, but still it didn't really edge them out as much. And that's going to be interesting. So this is looking at the SQL Server workload. Um, when it should be important to note the SQL Server workload is one of our most latency sensitive workloads. Right. And it's not that we're saying anyone's going to run their enterprise SQL Server database on this. What we're saying is if you're a developer or a, a you know, programmer and you're going to do some of this at a local level, uh, this is what it you know, what it would show if you're running it in your local machine. Well, yeah, and with the amount of RAM that you have in a uh, common desktop or notebook, it's not uncommon where you might be able to load up a little virtual machine and start messing around with stuff uh, outside of a work environment or sure. maybe a home lab environment. Okay, but this isn't the whole story. And as we look at the rest of the benchmarks, now this is where, to me, it starts to get interesting because you look at this, and this starts to be sort of chest-thumping territory for WD, and the big fight that I expected going into this was going to be WD versus Samsung, the new 980 Pro, because the 980 Pro, we know, kind of smoked the rest of the category when we looked at that a few weeks ago. Now you've got the SN850, which in this particular workload pulls well ahead. Yeah, and it also it's interesting, not all Gen 4 drives are made equal. There are a lot of vendors that will come out with products that support Gen 4, but it's more of a compatibility thing, not a um, performance reason. Well, how many times do we have to say this, though, whether it's the interface or the you know, everything around NVMe? NVMe is fast. NVMe is fast. Well, it doesn't have to be fast. It's just a way of communication, if you think about it that way. And you and I can both use English, and one of us can be worse at it than the other. True. It depends on who, though. <laughs> does. Um, so when we when we look at these 64K numbers, if we stopped here, I mean, that, that looks fantastic. Yeah. But we didn't stop here. So what else we got? Now, so we go to our 4K random read uh, workload, and this was an interesting one. It has the highest uh, throughput in this particular uh, test, just under 800,000 IOPS. But it eats it on the latency on the front end. Yeah, it's it ends up having a higher latency floor. Are you sure you didn't chart this backwards? Correct, yes. Okay. Uh, so there, there were some interesting anomalies that we detected, although, I mean, a lot of the drives, it really depends on um, how they're really focused, how they're tuned. Yeah, and that's an interesting note because I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a, a firmware drop uh, for this drive in the in the next couple of months to try to target some of these uneven areas. You know, what's surprising is going back uh, like five or ten years. Heck, actually, when was the first time? Well, how long ago has it been since our first SSD? Jeez. Uh, the X25M probably, somewhere yeah. in that era. Oh yeah, and you look at those and the amount of firmware updates that those would go through, and it could almost be like quarterly, and now oh, you're sure. lucky yeah, to they, see a firmware update. Yeah, the initial drives used to get updated every couple of months, especially uh, some of the more adventurous companies. OCZ was cranking out updates left and right. Well yeah, I mean those were the drives that you really needed your uh, toolbox to update the drive because they would be shipping fast enough that uh, they'd probably be optimizing long after these products hit the market. I feel like there's a toolbox joke in there, but for now we'll bypass that and continue on with this performance. So in the uh, 4K uh, right workload, this is one area where the 980 Pro really just, it just is insanely uh, more competitive in, the, in that particular market. Space. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a nice and tidy line too from the Samsung drive. And I think it goes back to your point where when you were looking at the larger 64K block uh, performance where the SN850 uh, basically inversed this, right? Did, did so well and was out ahead of the group. And now it's kind of in the clump and, and the Samsung says nighty night. Yeah, and these workloads aren't the average like, hey, we're loading up Chrysalis Mark and we have a one or two terabyte drive and we're testing a one gigabyte file size. Right. This is leveraging 1% or 5%. Well, in this case, we're testing 5% of the drive surface. And this is the terabyte drive that we're testing, which is the same capacity as the Samsung. So we're like for like on that. And, yeah. And we're testing what's 5% of a terabyte. Oh, my math doesn't work that well. I'm a little <laughs> bit light on coffee at the moment. <laughs> Get out of here. All right. What else you got? Um, and that is the well. So that's the end of what we're looking at on the um, in the video on the performance side. Okay. But it's really showing the the perspective of there are certain benchmarks that it is class leading. Although you have to really look into what the focus is. If you're looking at just a pure sequential bandwidth play, it's going to have the highest performance on the read mm -hmm. for 4K random read. It might not have the lowest latency at the lowest load levels. Okay. So it really depends on where your focus is, where you're looking for, and I mean, there are, you're going to find different competitive advantages for different products in the market right now. 
So you were talking about Toolbox and WD has updated software to go with these black WD Black line of products. Let's, yeah. let's take a look at that because this is kind of interesting too, I think. All SSD vendors offer tools like this. We've profiled. I should uh, say most. Uh, we, there are probably I think everyone's got one at this point, at least for firmware updates or secure race or whatever. I th there, I think there's some stragglers in this space. Uh, all the main vendors have them. All right. Well, the further down you go in the quality spectrum of SSDs, the worse the toolbox will be. Probably. Although Intel's isn't that great. Honestly. I mean, all it really has to do is show you: is your drive connected? Is it visible? Maybe the uh, this life remaining uh, bit. Well, yeah, Maybe temperature, but yeah. Let's take a look at that. I think the life remaining is a good one. That's a nice visualization. Show and notice how we've got this in a older system, so it shows that it's Gen four, but only operating at Gen three. So yeah. that's actually a neat visual if you have a new system and you're not sure. Uh, is this port Gen 4, is everything working right? That's a good uh, check in there. Yeah, and then you can, uh, so in this case, we have the drive slotted as a secondary drive. We're not applying a load to it, but you can see what the performance ranges are and even uh, compare it, uh, performance against temperature, which leading into the um, certain areas, notebooks or um, desktops without a lot of airflow, it might let you track, hey, maybe I do need a heat sink. Maybe something I'm getting uh, performance curbing uh, going on because it's running hotter. Well, and you would see that here. This is a great place to visualize that if your thing starts you know, smoking and your your performance curves down, then you'll uh, you'll you'll know and and then you'll slap that aftermarket yeah. heat sink on. Yeah, in a little area to make sure that uh, trim is enabled and then uh, the different write cache settings for uh, Windows. Yeah, most people probably aren't gonna mess around with, with all of this, but it's it's nice to know it's there. I like, you just skipped off the erase drive, but I kind of like that if you ever sell your drive or or you know, give it to somebody else, this is a good place to go ahead and wipe it clean, yeah, although, assuming it's not your boot drive. Yeah, some of this, um, like in this particular case, uh, it depends on um, the operating system and how those systems are configured, because right now we can't, uh, do a secure race because the way the drive is locked down from the uh, system boot. Right, so if we put it in a sled or something? Well, this is more related to uh, the way the BIOS will fire up uh, that particular drive. So in certain cases, you have to make sure that um, your system could support it or you go into an external device and there are some options there. Okay. Uh, anything else in here that looks interesting? I mean, it just, it's a good way to uh, make sure that uh, the drive is set up and functioning the, uh, the way you want it. And there's this little gaming mode on and off that I believe turns off the low power modes uh, and gives you just that li little bit extra performance. Think about how much better you'd be at Fortnite if you had these tools at your disposal. Well, I don't think I'll have any bearing because I'm playing on an Xbox. Okay, well, you know, to each his own. But overall, the, uh, the drive, nice compact design. Two terabyte top end. I mean, we might like to see a four to get uh, some of the higher capacities out there. But truth be told, in the consumer SSD market, still the one and two terabyte capacities are are really where the volume's at. So we're not seeing these guys really push the designs too much. Plus, that probably forces them into a dual sided PC or a, a NAND well, on both sides. And yeah, we've seen different. Uh, like, there's been drastic uh, price increases going to the more boutique capacities right now. So sure, yeah, yeah, very no. much an enthusiast capacity. Yeah, the fours or even the eights. Uh, but from a performance standpoint, like Kevin highlighted, it's got some really great strengths, and then it's kind of average in in some other spots. And the review has a, a couple more charts to take a look at if you want to see more details there. The question is really just going to come down to uh, some of the extras, uh, the the compatibility with uh, their their tools. Samsung's got a nice toolbox as well, but you know WD's is, is pretty good uh, for the gamer focused market. The um, uh, capacity, the price, and the pricing is a little bit amorphous right now for the 850 because it's just now hitting market. Uh, but you can't really go wrong with either one of those drives, no, I would say. It's a quality offering, especially compared to some of the other drives that might have Gen 4 compatibility, but don't really push that interface that much. Yeah, absolutely. So just a reminder, because it says Gen 4 does not mean fast, okay? And uh, this guy's pretty fast. And I do think that uh, that we'll see a firmware update. Uh, we don't have any inside knowledge on that. No. But but just based on the, the performance profile, it's good, it's strong, but it could be a little bit better and they can probably... Uh, tweak that a little bit. So for now, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you checking out this review and we'll be back soon with another one.